In this video, we will cover four main topics. One, where we are in late August, early September 2011, relative to some key points in market history. Two, how we may approach the markets based on various possible outcomes, both bullish and bearish. Three, how moving averages can help us monitor long-term trends in asset prices. And four, how those same moving averages can help us better discern between a possible major change in trend and a sharp correction within an existing trend. The concepts presented here are general in nature and thus apply to various markets under various conditions. These concepts are not unique to the stock market. They also apply to currencies, commodities, and bonds. These concepts are not unique to the summer of 2011. If you ran across this video in 2014, it could still help you make better decisions from a risk-reward and probabilistic perspective. This is a long-term daily chart of the S&P 500 index going back to 1995. We use this chart to put the current present-day market for the summer of 2011 in some perspective. The blue line is the 200-day moving average for the S&P 500 index. The red line is the 50-day moving average. In general terms, a bull market looks like this. The slope of the 200-day moving average is pointing up. The 50-day, the red line, tends to stay above the 200-day. This is what a bear market looks like. The slope of the 200-day is negative, and the 50-day tends to stay below the 200-day. You'll notice here we're in possibly one of those transition periods where the 50-day has crossed over the 200-day, and you'll see in a little while that the slope of the 200-day has actually rolled over. So there are similarities to this peak here and this peak here. Our challenge is, is to discern, are we in a period that looks like one of these peaks, or are we in one of these head fake periods? Price, or day-to-day -day volatility, has been removed from this chart to illustrate how these moving averages can help us. This is the same chart. Now we've added back in the day-to-day -day volatility. Some things we can learn here. This correction here, in terms of the moving averages, they told you to try to stay with this market. The slope of the 200-day looks like a bull market. The 50-day is still above the 200-day. Using the moving averages here, this volatility, you should try to ignore it so you can capture these highs. Same thing with this sharp correction. This still looks like a bull market. Try to stay with it. This consolidation period here, slope is still positive. Try to stay with it. 1998, which we'll revisit. This one's a little bit more difficult. You do get the bearish cross of the red over the blue or the 50 over the 200. That one's not as clear cut, so we'll look at that a little bit further. Same thing in a bear market. If you just looked at these moving averages in retrospect, you say, how would I have not sold? It's so obvious that we're in a bear market. Well, this volatility in these counter trend rallies tell you why it's so difficult. From a psychological perspective, the market doesn't go straight down. It, it keeps having counter trend rallies in a bear market, and that keeps people in the market where they say, I see, we're, we're okay now. We're okay now. Maybe things aren't so bad. The moving averages help us take a step back from that day-to-day -day volatility and the emotional swings and make more of an objective and rational judgment in terms of the market that we're looking at in the present day. This is the S&P 500's bull market peak when the dot-com bubble burst in the year 2000. You've still got the 200-day and the 50-day. This is the present setup. The point that we want to make here is there are some similarities between this peak and where we are today. This is the 50-day moving average. Notice the slope of it crossing the 200-day. The 50-day is kind of rolling over here, and the 200-day is flat. Present day, 50-day kind of rolling over here. The 200-day is flat. Now notice here we had a similar situation last summer. Here's where QE2 came into play. The Fed printed money and bailed this market out. There is a little bit of a difference here. This is a little bit more of a pronounced decline here. This is a steeper slope. 
whereas this is more of a gradual slope and a rollover. And what this slope coming down to the 50 here rolling over tells you is this is a market that's been somewhat in a consolidation phase and people are really starting to somewhat question the sustainability of the bull market. So a slope that is less steep and has more of a rolling hill look to it tends to be more sustainable than a sharper slope that's more of a panic sell-off that has a chance to snap back. This here is the bull market peak when the housing bubble burst. So once again, we're looking side by side at a bull market peak in the present day. Similar situation here, you've got a flat 200-day moving average shown in blue. You've got the 50-day moving average crossing over. What I would note here is this market actually looks worse than this one. The present day to me, just in terms of looking at this, this one set of indicators, the 200-day, the 50-day in price, I think the present day looks more like the dot-com bust than it does here. Notice the slope of the 50 and the 200 here are more sideways than they are here. This market is stronger in the present day here than it is here. This, this is a weak market that's been consolidating for some time and raising several red flags. Now this market tanked. We lost 50% from October of 2007 till March of 2009. It went down fast. The dot-com bust took two years roughly to lose 50%. So if, if there's anything positive about this, it may be that if we do go into a bear market, it may be one that takes longer and isn't as waterfall-like as this one was. But still, we've got similarities. This is a slope that's coming down. And notice this isn't a sharp cross here. That, to me, says it's sustainable. Probably the sharper the cross of the 50 of the 200, the more likely you are to bounce back. When you get that rolling hill look, that's bearish. But the takeaway is, is there's similarities today between this peak and the dot-com peak. Revisiting the dot-com peak, I don't think there's anyone that's ever been involved with technical analysis in any way that wouldn't admit that the present day doesn't look somewhat similar to this. So this is the before. What happened next? This market went into full-blown bear market mode. Some things that we can learn here. A lot of us, myself included, would be nervous that the present day market might rally all the way back to the 200-day moving average, which is around 1280 in late August 2011. Notice in this bear market, we really never got near the 200-day moving average again until all the way down here. So it took over a year to revisit the 200-day. Some things to look for here. For the most part, this bear market was bounded by the 50-day moving average. Stocks prices tended to stay below the 50 day. So there's a snapback rally here. This is potentially an opportunity to take a bearish position or short or an inverse position, which is risky. If you're not experienced doing that, you should really think twice about it. Another failure here at the 50, a potential to take on bearish positions. Here we break above, but notice we never really get close to the 200 day. Here we fail somewhat near the 200-day, another opportunity to potentially take on a bearish stance. Here, for the first time in the whole bear market, stocks consolidated around the 200-day moving average. This is different than what happened before and looks like to be somewhat of a bullish signal. It, it was in that stocks were able to consolidate here but notice the slope of the 200-day never was able to turn positive here. And we were never able to break above the 200-day in terms of price convincingly. Here, you've got white space and almost a fan or triangular pattern between the 200-day and the 50-day. This is what really a sustainable bear market tends to look like. There's white space between the 50 and the 200 when you pop into that white space, it has a tendency to get rejected. Here, 
why things were bearish is the 200 day was never able to a be retaken and b regain a positive slope this was somewhat of a bullish head fake here but this consolidation pattern tends to be a continuation pattern and the trend here is obviously down moving back to the peak of the housing mortgage and credit bubble this is the similarity to what we have today in the summer of 2011. This would be the before, and this would be the after. So we've got a similar situation here. In the early stages of this bear market, we get that fan look with the white space that's not filled between the 200-day and the 50-day. How that can help us today is... If the present day bear market is going to be similar to the dot com peak or the credit bubble peak that we're looking at here, then we really shouldn't challenge the 50 day moving average and move into this white space anytime soon. That should, would take some time if we had a similar situation. Now, this bear market was a little bit different in that we were able to come all the way back and make a serious challenge towards the 200-day moving average. And here, this would be an excellent opportunity to consider taking a bearish stance. Why is that? When you get up here, this still looks like a bear market. A, the slope of the 200-day moving average has not turned up. This slope is indecisive, but, but still bearish. The 50-day is still below the 200-day. That looks like a bear market. And price right here failed at the 200-day. So when you got to this point here, this looks really bearish. The slope of this is rolling back over. Price here has moved below both the 200 and the 50. And then here, the 50 starts to roll over. And of course, we got another waterfall decline here. This white space might go a long way in determining whether or not the current setup is going to look more like a 1998 where we come down here and spring back or a 1987 where we consolidate and then spring back or like this peak where we go into a, a longer term waterfall type decline. 200 day is in blue here. This is that rollover look in the 200 day that we want to try to avoid in the current setup that we have in 2011. In part two, or video two of two, we will review bullish and bearish historical cases that have similarities to the present day. We will discuss possible market strategies based on how things unfold in the coming weeks. The second video will be posted on our blog, Short Takes, and on the Shivako Capital channel on YouTube. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.